what I like, you know, and I think that I found my people that enjoy that as well. So I'm grateful and it's a blessing. You know, God always had a plan over my life. It was just up to me to tap into it. And he still has so much more in store for me. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany. And if this is your first time stumbling across one of my videos, I focus on fashion, beauty, and lifestyle. So if that seems like something that you may be interested in, please think about clicking on that subscribe button if you enjoy the content, of course. Also, if you're already a subscriber, go ahead and click on that notification bell. I'll upload twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And sometimes I'll upload a bonus video, so I don't want you to miss any of them. So today we are going to be doing my hair, you guys. Like my hair has been looking a hot mess, okay? So it is time for a new unit. I'm super excited about this one. This one is by West Kiss and I've worked with this company before. I'm also going to be doing an updated q and I thought what better time while we are in quarantine than for you guys to get to know me because I know so many of you guys are new to my channel. So I'm so grateful for you all, you know, coming over and subscribing and hopefully I can keep you guys entertained during this lockdown. Um, so yeah, I asked you guys to ask me some questions and I'm going to be answering those today. So if you are interested in learning more about me and also seeing how I was able to achieve this super cute hairstyle, then stick around. Okay, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and apply our wig. I'm probably going to speed up this part because you guys have seen me apply my wig several times. Um, I'll link some application videos down below just in case you want to see the full process. I'm going to show you, but it's just going to be sped up. Um, by the way, this video is sponsored by West Kiss. Um, I've worked with this company before and I have a unit from them. So I was going to use a wig cap, but as you can see, they sent me wig caps that were too light and I'm noticing that the lace was too light on my unit. So I had to put a little makeup on it. So here is my unit here. I did wash and bleach the knots on this and that's when I learned that the um, lace was way too light. So I've put makeup in there as you can see but I believe this is either light lace or transparent lace but we're going to try to work with it today so um yeah this is body wave I believe 22 inches in its natural color but everything will be in the description box just in case so right now I just want to see how the wig fits for the simple fact that I have a small head I always get the small size but I'm just wondering since the lace is off could this just be the wrong wig in general so um I'm gonna take that cap off don't worry um but it seems like it fits so we're gonna go ahead and get started with the application you can see this is a whole lot of hair y'all <laughs> and after I apply the unit that's when we'll get into all the questions Thank you. 
y'all. So I have it down. This is what we're working with, okay? I'll clean it up and everything in a second. But right now, I just need to mold it. I'm gonna do a middle part. Um, I thought about doing a side part, but yeah, I think I'm gonna do middle straight. So I'm gonna look in my mirror here off to the side so I can get this part straight. Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get for now. So I'm just gonna take some mousse. I'm using the Rose Water and Argan Oil Curl Mousse. This is from African Pride. Any mousse or like foaming lotion will do. This is just to set the unit. So it'll tame those flyaways and just make it look super nice and silky. And I love this mousse because first of all, it smells like candy. Second of all, and roses, I guess. Second of all, it um, it does not make my hair hard. It just makes it extremely shiny. So I love this. All right, so I got the middle. Now I just want to, I like to kind of brush the unit back a little bit so that it's not like, stuck to my forehead so like this and then I'll put a little bit of mousse now you I only use the got to be glued spray so I don't want to get too much mousse around the edges but just like right behind the hairline and then you can always you know fix it once you get it set how you want it like if it lifts or anything like that uh oh see we got a little bit right there Okay, y'all, I want to put a little gloss on, honey. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the question. Okay, so someone asks, do you like living in a condo, trying to figure out the pros and cons of a single family home in a, in a condo? And I actually love living in my condo. Um, I do have a video on my channel kind of talking about my journey and my testimony. I believe it's called single family home versus condo or vice versa. And um, I kind of talk about, again, how I got to this point. So I did initially go in just looking for either a town home or a condo I ended up in a condo and for me it's just something that I've always liked as far as you know how to live because it's just me I'm single um, I don't have like kids or anything like that I have a boyfriend but I don't need the land I don't like being outside period I don't even sit out on my balcony so even if I had the land I wouldn't do anything with it. I don't want to cut the grass. I'd rather pay someone, you know, I have an HOA fee, of course, but I'd rather pay someone to kind of keep up the outside. Um, but it's just, you know, it's all about personal preference. The only con I would say is that you may need to be mindful of your neighbors. I don't have an issue with hearing my neighbors through the walls or anything like that. But, um, you know, that may be a con for some. And also it just depends on like parking and things like that. Those could be cons. When you have your own land, your own house, obviously you don't have to worry about those things. So um, that's just, you know, personal preference. So I would kind of, you know, weigh out what you want and then see kind of which way to go. Okay, so the next question is, can you talk about your career journey? How did you get into the field you are in today? Um, so my career journey, I'll just start off with um, college. You know, I went to college. I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to be an a news anchor actually. So I went and I majored in mass communications. Um, once I got into school, I started doing like production for one of the local news channels and I realized what production really was and it's not fun. It's not you, like I was just going through tape like just looking at the tape, it was just not fun for me. Um, also realizing that all the news anchors that I saw, they were in that same position ever since I was a little girl. And I realized how, how hard it would be to become an actual news anchor sitting down on the TV screen every single day. Um, you know, you have to start out in the field nine times out of 10 reporting and all different kinds of conditions, uh, even talking about things that you may not want to talk about. So that's when I kind of realized, mm, maybe I don't want to do that. And I changed my major about halfway through. Um, I actually switched schools as well. And I majored in corporate communications and organizational communications, which is um, I did nonprofits, learned how to write grants, um, you know, learned the corporate side of communications, like 
press releases and things like that. So that's my major. And when I got out of school, you guys, let me just tell you, I don't know if it's our generation, but a lot of the times, you know, you're told you go to school, you'll have a career, you'll be okay. No, 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 no. I got my bachelor's degree and I looked for a job for about six months before I was able to land my first gig. And it doesn't mean like, I think it would have been harder for me, I think, if I was getting the callbacks going in and being denied. I didn't even get any callbacks. And the reason was because I did not really work in school. I was blessed not to have to, you know, have a full time job or a job at all while working. I mean, while going to school, but I had no work experience, though I did internships and things like that. They really want work experience um, coming out of school, you know, maybe being in the communications department of an actual corporation. They want you to have like four to five years experience. How can you have that coming out of college if you did not work, you know? So um, that was hard for me. So I started out working like miscellaneous jobs, like they were all office work. Um, and that's one thing that I made sure that I did. I always did clerical work because I knew that that would help boost my resume. I didn't just take like retail jobs or anything like that. So I finally landed my first gig and it was with uh, Dave Ramsey or a subsidiary of like Dave Ramsey. So, you know, we did the whole financial piece and all of that. That was as close as I ever got to finance, but it was really like, um, insurance and just like clerical work, you know, stuff like that. It was just clerical work. So after that, I ended up getting another kind of like miscellaneous job doing like admin work and stuff like that. Then I went back to healthcare and I started working in provider enrollment for an amazing company, actually the same company that I interned with uh, years before. And that's how I was able to kind of get my foot in the door. This company that I work for is really highly, um, you know, respected and everyone knows about the company usually, especially in the healthcare industry. So after that, that's when I was recommended by someone to go to the job that I have now. And I had absolutely no accounting experience whatsoever. I was very honest with them, but they knew that I was a hard worker just from, you know, coming from where I came from as far as the company. And again, that company is very prestigious. And they were like, why are you leaving this company? And the funny thing is, it's like when I was in provider enrollment, we didn't really make any money like that. You were more of a number because the company is so large than you were like an actual, you know, person who was able to like make a change into your department. So moving into the company that I work for now, it's just amazing because it's a progressive company. Um, they listen to their employees, you know, we can make suggestions and see those changes come into fruition. Um, but yeah, that's how I got, you know, the job that I have now. I've been working there for about three and a half, four years, maybe five years. Oh my goodness, y'all. I've been working there for five years. It'll be five years in October, actually. So yeah, I absolutely love what I do. I love the people who I work with and I'm just blessed. You know, it was just all in God's timing and that's how I got into finance. Okay, so the next question is finance and budgeting tips. And I think it's because I'm in finance that people just think that I have like a plethora of information to give like, I guess on a personal level, when it comes to financing, like budgeting and stuff like that. And I don't because I'm working for a large corporation. So, you know, we're handling large lumps, lump sums of money. So it's easy to budget when you have a lot of money. But the one thing that I will say that helped me is to actually create a budget template. So I have a budgeting template and I do a zero dollar balance. Um, basically what that means is that every single dollar that comes into my life is accounted for. So like think mortgage, car note, like my car is paid for, thank God, but you know, um, brows, nails, um, groceries, gas, everything is literally accounted for down to a zero dollar balance. So savings and all of that is included. Even blow money is included in that template. And that has helped me a lot because I'm able to see exactly where each dollar is going. And it helps me to kind of like assess what I need to do or what I'm doing wrong. And so I do that every single month and I have mine set up on a bi-weekly because that's how I get paid. Um, but yeah, that's the best thing that happens to me is to start actually creating a template and a, a budget spreadsheet for myself. Also, as far as like savings and stuff like that, I think that's the hardest part. Saving money, um, 
I always talk about Mia Ray's like technique. I think it's like you can you can lose twenty five dollars a week or fifty dollars or something like that. But basically, it's like take twenty five dollars out of your paycheck or you know every single week and act like you've lost it. What happens when you lose money? You never see it again. So you have to act like it is not there. And by the end of the time, you know you'll have a nice little lump sum of money saved up. And so I think that. You know, you have to change your mindset if you're struggling with saving money simply because you can save. You really can. Even if it's $10, like you can get rid of it. Think about the times that you may go to Target and just buy whatever, you know, or think about the times that you eat out and all these things. So like, of course, treat yourself. Y'all know I'm all about that. But if you are having a hard time saving, just act like you've lost that little small amount of money. And the more you do it, obviously the more money you'll have in the end. So that has been a really good tip for me. Like I lose almost like I lose a, a significant amount of my paycheck. Okay. And I act like it's not even there. I put it in savings. And then also I have a second income, which is YouTube and social media. So I'm able to really have a little bit more leeway with my money because I have, you know, more money coming in. So Next question is, if you could go back in life, no, if you can go back in time, what would you have done differently in your life? Um, I'm a person of no regrets. Once it's done, it's done. But one thing that I do wish that I would have done a little bit differently is gone like further away for college. I wanted to go to an HBCU. Um, I kind of went to like a private school that set the tone for that. So, you know, I everyone around me kind of went to an HBCU and I really thought that that would be me. But when it came down to it, I guess I just did not really know um, which way to go, you know, so I just kind of chose the safer route. I went away to school about, I think it's like two and a half hours, but not far enough. And I feel like it would have really changed the trajectory of my life, even though I'm in a great place now. But it took me a while to get to this place where I'm like super comfortable financially and just um, coming into myself as far as like networking and stuff like that. I've always been like an introvert. And so even though people look at me and they think, oh, you're so like outgoing and all of that, it's like that's the Libra in me. But my actual self is pretty introverted. So it's always been kind of difficult for me to like get out there and like just chat and talk to people. Um, and I think that going off to school, like kind of being away from my comfort zone would have helped me to do that a lot more sooner, um, you know, than now. So that's the only thing I would really change in my life. Um, everything else, I feel like it has been a lesson and not a loss. So I'm pretty happy with the choices that I've made. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. All right, now I wanna take this off. All right, so while we're doing this, I have a little alcohol here. Um, it says, in older videos, you mentioned a bad relationship, new outlook on love. So that kind of piggybacks off of like regrets and things like that from my last question. And honestly, that relationship that I did speak about, though all those things definitely happened and I felt that way in that moment, I realize now how much of a blessing it was because, you know, I never have been a weak person and I became super weak during that time. And I really just did not even know who I was. Like it, it was like I was a walking zombie, but all of that really has helped me to be the person that I am now. So, you know, I definitely have a new outlook on love. I know that love does not have to um, hurt. It does not have to, you know, be confusing. Um, or any of those things. And in that time, I was extremely confused, you know, but love doesn't have to be confusing, especially when it is mutual. So, um, and some people are just a little bit, um, you know, they come in with different baggage than you. We all have our own baggage, but they'll come in with, you know, different baggage than you have. So they kind of project those insecurities off, you know, onto you. And that's kind of what happened. But I knew that I knew that that person had a few issues that there was nothing I could do. But, you know, as women, we kind of feel like we'll be the exception. And I had never known him to treat anyone the way he treated me. But, you know, it all makes sense now, of course, in hindsight. So definitely like a new outlook on love. I know everyone comes with their own set of issues. But um, the main thing I've learned is that 
you can't be someone's comfort and their punching bag all at the same time. Like you just cannot. You know? Okay, Brittany in the future here. I just wanted to interject really quickly because I know people can take metaphors and like run with them. I just want to be clear. I was never in a physically abusive relationship. When I referred to a punching bag, I meant mentally and verbally. So just wanted to clear that up really quick. Back to the Q&A. At the same time, like you just cannot, you know, you cannot allow them to treat you. However, just because you understand that they're going through a tough time. So yeah, that's just called a toxic relationship. <laughs> so now I'm just going to flat iron this out. Um, I'm using a super old Numi flat iron. This is like my favorite flat iron. I have newer ones that look a lot better, but you know how it is. Okay. Oh, the hair is nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Next question is, how do you keep your weight down? <laughs> I'm always getting questions about my weight um, and I don't keep my weight down. I think, you know, like I talk about um, how I've gained weight and how I continue to gain weight. Y'all see how I eat. Like I don't eat the healthiest anymore. When I was losing weight, I definitely was eating to lose weight. Now, um, the only thing I'm doing is more so portion control, but I eat any and everything that I want, which is why I am struggling right now. But I know that. So it's not like I'm in denial. That's the worst thing you could be is to be in denial and tell yourself you're doing all the right things and you're not, and you're not seeing results. So I know what I'm doing wrong. I'm just too lazy right now to actually go as full throttle as I did before. Um, but I know I can, you know, if I absolutely need to. And the older you get, the harder it is, I think, to lose weight, in my opinion. So um, I lost some weight last summer, and it took me really like doing a cleanse and like really eating healthy. And I think it's because my body has gotten so accustomed to me eating, you know, lighter than I used to. Um, I kind of stay away from carbs. Now, I still eat fried food and stuff like that. But usually I don't eat hamburgers or like pastries. I'm not a sweet eater like that. So that works, you know, to my advantage. But I don't really keep my weight down. I'm not even thinking about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I should. This is like the perfect time while we're in quarantine to actually lose some weight. But um, lazy Libra problems. <laughs> okay, so next question is, what are your goals for the future with pockets and bows? So that's a pretty good question. I believe in my last Q&A, I talked about um, me never having a goal for my channel. And since then, obviously, I and hopefully you guys have seen that I've taken you know, social media a little bit more serious as far as like the work that I put into it. I've become extremely consistent and I've seen the fruits of my labor. And so that has really motivated me. Um, I am kind of in the works with doing something, you know, that I'm excited to do, but I don't like to talk about things before they are actually done. Um, but it's in the brainstorming stages right now. So I definitely want to take this, you know, a little bit to the next level, but I don't want to uh I don't want to like do this full time I've learned that just I'm just not that type of person like I need structure in my life and I'm learning that even more I knew this before but even more during this whole quarantine it is taken a lot for me to get up and get motivated like I absolutely love filming videos but to actually get up and get ready to do it oh my goodness and I will wait until the last minute so I like that structure you know that having a nine to five provides so um yeah, that's if that's what you were wondering, like, do I want to do this full time? No, that's not a goal of mine. Now, if it I don't I don't know in what capacity that I would ever want to just do this full time. If I'm just at home making videos, um, I would never want to do it full time. Now, if I come out with like a line or something and I can put my energy into that and like get up and do something every single day that I can see. I don't know. It's just I'm weird like that. Then maybe. But just to get up and do the same thing that I can do after work? No. <laughs> and plus, who wants to go without like paid for insurance? Like, especially if you work in healthcare, you know, those benefits are amazing. Next question. Um, hey, Brittany, what's a good foundation to use for someone with slightly dry skin? So my skin has been pretty dry during this whole quarantine thing. And I've been using, actually, it's right here, my Naked Skin Foundation by Urban Decay. 
this is the foundation I've been using um, and it has I wouldn't say that it's for dry skin but I think it's like for combination skin and it does not like amplify any dry patches that you have so I really like that for now because I have kind of combination oily skin I don't have any foundations that are for dry skin if that makes any sense but that one has been really nice um, I did used to use it was a uh, what is the what is it called bare minerals liquid foundation and I could only use that when it was cold outside so I think that may be a good one um, and it gives you a nice beautiful glow as well so maybe try that one out next question where do you shop for Lux and low items so for Lux items I shop everywhere I shop at forward blue fly Luisa Villaroma um, for fetch is one of my favorites italist.com is one of my favorites um, Saks, Neiman's, I mean literally everywhere, Essence. Um, for Lowe's, I shop everywhere as well. H&M, Zara, Nordstrom, depending on what it is, uh, Express, um, Pretty Little Thing sometimes, Boohoo, all the places that I've done videos on, like that's where I shop, so. That's where I find all of my things. So the next question is, how do you balance feminine and edgy style together? Um, I've always I've always loved that juxtaposition of the edgy and the feminine. That's just always been something that I've loved. I think that started when I started wearing heels because I used to be a tomboy, believe it or not. In high school, um, I started wearing, well, I think it was like middle school, junior high. I started wearing heels. And heels and jeans, it was, you know, early 2000s, heels and jeans was a thing. So it was always like that little mix um, of the feminine and the edgy because you had your heels on. But, you know, you may throw on a graphic tee and some jeans or something like that. So that's always been like my thing. The older I've gotten, the more I have kind of refined my style a little bit and started wearing things that just fit me a little bit better, um, less less casual I kind of I mean I always feel like it's a nice balance with casual but I like to take dressier items and kind of edge them up a little bit and I just like to dress a little bit more feminine than edgy these days because before I you would catch me in some cargos you know my Manola Blonic Tims and you know stuff like that but of course hair and makeup that's the feminine part but now I like a few more feminine um actual clothing pieces I've always been weird about feminine clothing but lately I have really been into more feminine clothing just because I've gotten older and I don't know it just makes more sense and that's just the place that I'm in right now next question is what do you think of the cloth is um, I think it's functional I think it's you know nice um, if I redo my second bedroom I will probably do a cloth office because I do work out of there, um, you know, working from home and I work from home like everybody else does right now. But even before this whole quarantine thing, I worked from home like one day a week. So definitely need an office and I only have two bedrooms. So definitely, you know, a cloth office is a good idea. Um, but they can become expensive, you know, depending on who you go through. So I love to go and get a an Ikea pack system, which I think everybody and their mom has, but it is the cheapest and most efficient. And I've seen some really good um, designs and stuff on YouTube. So I would like to do that, but we don't have an Ikea here. So it's kind of difficult for me because I need to kind of see what I want, know exactly each piece, you know? So yeah, I think it's a good idea. Next question is, do you believe in marriage or do you intend to get married someday? Yeah, I believe in marriage. I think marriage is beautiful. It's a union between two people that love one another and they want to create a life together. Um, but I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> I have never been the little girl that thought about my wedding day or a wedding dress or any of those things. When I was a kid, when I saw my future I literally saw myself holding a briefcase standing in front of a tall building. Literally. That was what I saw for my life. And I never forget we did like a career day or something at school. I was in elementary school and I literally went in there with a suit on and I was probably six years old. A suit and a briefcase. So I've always been 
the career woman, but I love companionship. You know, um, I have a boyfriend now and we have talked about getting married and, you know, all those things, but I'm in no rush. Like, I don't feel like, I don't feel like you have to rush when it's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no need to rush to get married. We don't have children. There's no need to like blend anything right now. We're just living and loving each other and enjoying each other right now. Um, so yeah, I definitely believe in it and I definitely plan on getting married someday and, uh, it'll be fun. But one thing I will say, I've always said when I get married, I want to be married for a couple years before I have children. Now y'all know <laughs> these thirties is coming quickly. Okay. And they are waiting on no one, but I still don't feel like I'm ready to have kids. And I still feel that way. Like I still feel like I want to be married before, um, you know, for a little while before bringing kids into our lives. So we'll see how that part goes. But next question, do you enjoy being a homeowner? And would you as a single woman recommend it? I love being a homeowner. Um, again, in my video, I spoke about owning a home and how I'm just so weird about certain debts. Um, paying rent and never having the opportunity to own it, it just kind of gave me a little bit of anxiety. And I'll spend money on a lot of other things, you know, but it's like I can hold on to those. Even if it's a bag, even if it's a pair of shoes, it's mine. So like to actually rent, it used to give me anxiety. So I waited, you know, until I was able to purchase a home and it was the best decision that I ever made. It's something that belongs to me. I can always, you know, get the equity out of it if I want to use it for something else, refinance, pay off bills if I want to do that, you know, sell it, move, rent, whatever. Like it's mine to make the decision. And I love that. So I would definitely recommend it for a single woman. I don't understand. I mean, I guess socially, you know, I understand why someone would ask for a single woman. Would you recommend it? But for me, it's like, why I, I always want my own, you know, and I'm not married. So, of course, I would recommend it for a single woman. Now, as a married woman, would you go and buy your house by yourself? I don't know how that works because I'm not married. But as a single woman, I don't understand why you wouldn't or you you should not have your own thing. You should not, in my opinion, wait for a man to come along before you own something. That's just my opinion, though. You know, I don't I don't know. But that could be because I never was that kid that like dreamed of this huge white dress and wedding either. So, you know, it could be skewed. But that's just how I feel about it. Absolutely. If you're a single woman and you want a home, please go get one, because. What what else would you wait on? Wait to not be single and then decide that you want to own something of your own. Eh, I don't know. You can always sell it. You can always rent it, but it's something that belongs to you. And that was just a goal of mine that I really wanted, you know, so highly recommend it. All right. So we got this one side straight and this is how it looks. It's pretty long, but it's pretty. I'm still getting the flyaways, but I have something for that at the end. And I will, um, I have like a little hump right here. I don't know what this is doing. I think this. My head is super small, y'all. So I have it on the on the tightest um, strap or hook, but I don't know if this is a small cap or not. I asked for a small cap, but I also asked for brown lace or medium brown lace, and I didn't get that. So this is what we're working with. Next one. You are one of my favorite YouTubers. I love to see your purchases. Thank you so much. That wasn't a question, but thank you so much. I like sharing. I love just sharing deals. I think that's the thing that got me really into YouTube is like, even though, you know, um, I would like buy like expensive things sometimes y'all notice nine times out of 10, there's a story behind it when I share. Now I don't share every single luxury purchase that I make or every purchase that I make. But if there was a, a deal or something to tell about it, like I'm probably gonna do, you know, a video about it. So thank you. Next question is, why did you decide to have skin removal, skin removal surgery covered by insurance? So I decided to have skin removal surgery because I lost a lot of weight and I was working out really hard at a, at a time in my life. <laughs> so I started working out and, um, you know, I noticed a difference in looking back, 
there was a major difference. But when I was in it, I didn't feel like I was getting the results that I wanted. And no matter how toned my legs or my arms got, my stomach was still hanging and swinging. And it just became a thing that I was just like, I wish it wasn't like that, but I wasn't depressed about it or anything. And then once I started making, you know, extra money enough to do certain things that I like as far as like buying luxury, maybe thinking about surgeries and stuff like that. That's when it became a conversation piece. Um, when I actually had that type of money coming in to where it would even be a conversation, you know, like before it wasn't a conversation because I didn't have that kind of money, but no, it was not covered by my insurance. Um, at all. I paid cash for mine and I definitely could have done like financing and stuff like that. But again, I'm weird about certain debts and I just don't like anything looming over my head if I can afford to buy it. Now, of course, I have a mortgage and that's looming over my head. I have student loans. Those are looming over my head. But, you know, if I can pay for it outright, I will do that. So I ended up just paying for it and it was one of the best decisions that I've made. I had a few issues when it came to my boobs but as far as like the skin removal for my stomach um I'm happy with it you know and it just made like losing that weight it made it more real because even though I lost weight I still couldn't wear certain things that I wanted to wear so that is why I oh honey can we not okay that's why I uh, got the skin removal surgery Next question is, what's the biggest challenge dressing yourself after losing weight and changing your body? Um, I think for me, when I first, if I don't know if you're talking about like just losing weight, period, or having the skin removal. For me, when I first had the skin removal, I was just very confused um, because, you know, I didn't wear clothes for a while because uh, your girl was like, honey, hunched over. And then... Also, my boobs were super flat. Like now they're like big size. But when I first got my skin removal on my breasts, my breasts were flat. They look like male pecs. And I had no clue how to wear. Like I could not wear a t-shirt. I look like a dude. Wearing button downs, you know, was literally the only thing that I felt comfortable wearing because I could show like a little bit of cleavage. But it was definitely a transition for me um, and just learning kind of like what works with my body before my fupa or whatever hanging stomach, it covered, you know, it blended in with my hips. I didn't even realize I had hips the way that I do until after I got the skin removal. So trying on and wearing different things like um, was a transition because even like the satin skirts, I'm like, this is not looking as chic as it once did. Like now I'm looking like you know, I'm showing off my body and I never like, like that's never been a goal of mine. So I just had to kind of learn how to dress for more of a pear shape than I guess an apple shape. So that was a transition, but I think I'm learning how to do that. I don't need to wear as many oversized clothes as I used to. Um, I used to love oversized clothes just because it kind of, I felt like it kind of hid certain problem areas and it just looked a lot more chic in my opinion put together but now I can you know to show off my shape a little bit more I will wear you know a tighter shirt on top and you know some jeans on the bottom and it still looks nice and put together and not like I'm busting out of it you know because even though I could fit it before when you have certain problem areas you don't want to put those on display so that's something that I definitely had to learn um, after getting the skin removal Next question, how has the COVID-19 affected your relationship? Some of us are struggling with the distance. Um, that's a good question, actually. So my boyfriend and I, y'all know, we always did date night. Um, and we would go out to eat or just try different things. And, you know, that was like our bonding time. Now, um, it is different. Like we have to kind of talk on the phone a little bit more. And because there is a little bit of an age difference, he loves texting and I hate texting, but even my friends, they like text texting. And I'm still like, girl, call me. I can't stand texting. So that has been a transition, like trying to like get, you know, find that common ground of like, 
don't text me. Like if it's going to be like the long, a long conversation, like I cannot do small talk. I do not want to text all day. Call me. I can do small talk over the phone if I know you, but to sit there and like constantly text about absolutely nothing, I just can't do it. So that's been a challenge. Um, also, we obviously don't get to go out as much or at all. Actually, we don't go out at all. So, you know, he'll still come over or, you know, we'll get together on the weekend. And like last weekend, we played Uno. We had a little libation, you know, and just enjoyed each other's company. Like we'll watch a show or something like that. So just finding new ways to kind of connect. Uh, but I think the hardest part has been not being able to go out and enjoy. Like we have to like kind of figure it out on the inside. So, yeah. And he also has asthma as well. So we've really been doing our part when it comes to social distancing, like... We don't go anywhere. He don't even go to the grocery store, honey. Like, we do nothing, you know? So, I think it's a transition, but it's just, you know, it's good to find other ways and new ways to communicate and find that, like, connection. Next question. Hi, did you have to get to a certain weight before your skin removal surgery? Um, I had already lost weight, which is why I got my skin removal surgery. But there are some doctors that require a different BMI. So some doctors that I uh, researched, you know, the BMI was 32, some was 34, some was 30. So it really just depends on the doctor. But I actually got my surgery because I had lost weight. So no, I did not have to like lose weight to have skin removal, if that makes any sense. Next question is, how do you balance fashion blogging while also working a corporate career? Now, before I used to just film videos all willy-nilly when I felt like it, when I had something to show, um, you know, and I wasn't as consistent. Lately, obviously, I have gotten on a schedule and I absolutely love that. So that was like the first thing that I did that, you know, helped me. And also getting a planner, like I had to take it back to college days, y'all. And I'm not a Pinterest girl. She is not that type of girl. But I had to take it back to college days and get a planner. I was always writing down like um, ideas for videos, but I didn't plan out my content. Now I have to plan out the content, like just making sure that, um, you know, everything is ready to go for upload day. I like to upload Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 a.m., so I have to make that work. And next question, have you been catching these sales? <laughs> so at the beginning of this quarantine thing, I was like, look, I am not buying anything. This is like the perfect time because I'm not going anywhere. So I'm not tempted. And honestly, I was not tempted up until last week. And here's my issue. Once I start, I cannot stop. OK, so. Last week, I realized, and I think I made, I know I did, I made a post talking about Bath and Body Works not giving us any coupons. Like, we're at home, we're cleaning up, we want our stuff to be smelling good, you know, all of that. So, I had some stuff in my cart on Bath and Body Works, and of course, there was no coupon, so she wasn't buying anything. Well, I let it sit in there, and guess what? Two days later, I ended up getting um, a 20% off coupon code to use. So I did that. That started the floodgates, okay? So I bought my stuff from Bath & Body Works. I got my wallflowers and all of that. Next thing you know, I'm buying some stuff from Saks. I got some Joe Malone stuff for the house. And then Saks was having their 25% off of beauty, which they've been having that and I was not tempted. But when I make a purchase, I can't just buy one thing, okay? So I bought my Joe Malone, then I added a perfume to the order, okay? Next thing you know, I'm on Poshmark. I'm looking at different things. I'm watching Sex in the City. I'm getting inspired. So I say all that to say I have bought things on Amazon. I have bought things from Sex, um, home stuff. And then I also bought like some fun stuff from... Um, forward it's like a couple of fashion pieces all on sale of course but nothing too much and I bought some shoes um nothing too expensive I, I wouldn't say I mean they're they're luxury shoes but not like thousand dollar shoes you know and then um what else I did buy a Chanel item and I got like a little SLG and it was just it was on sale got it from Fashion File love it it's so pretty and then what else that's about all, I think. So yes, I have gotten into the sales a little bit, but 
I did say I wasn't going to shop, but I have been doing so well with like saving like all extra money that's coming in. Oh, it just feels good. So I am in the market for an, a huge purchase. Well, big for me. I, I mean, a, a huge purchase. Um, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. So we're pretty much done. I'm just trying to think, do I want to... I don't think I want to add any baby hair, but I'm like, do I want to cut this? Because this is what we're looking like. I don't know that I want to cut it though. So I also wanted to stand up so y'all can see like the full length of this. Remember, I am 5'1". So this is what we're working with. The hair is super long. It's like right above my, like it's at my butt, okay? So absolutely loving this hair, y'all. So pretty. Um, I've already done the questions on IG. Let's go ahead and move into YouTube. Okay, first question is, can you talk about how you got into working in finance, being black and female in the corporate world, how you started your online boutique, methods you applied to grow as an influencer? All right, so I already kind of touched on how I got into working in the finance. Um, being black and working in the corporate world, honestly, I will say this, I have been blessed. I have not had any issues there. And I um, work for a company that is majority white, but it does not feel like that. Like I don't feel like an outcast, you know what I'm saying? But one thing about me is I am who I am. I go in very honestly, you know, like I don't fake the funk for these people and I don't fake the funk for y'all either. So who I am is who I am. They accept me for who I am and I'm blessed. You know, I don't have to worry about like racism or anything like that. Um, but I know that it can be a very like hot topic in corporate, especially for black women not getting paid what they deserve and all of that. But so far I haven't had that issue. Um, again, I work for a really progressive company and it's pretty much, you know, what you put out is what you will receive. So if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and, you know, networking and all of that, you're pretty much going to receive the same treatment, you know, it, as a person who would be naturally doing that. Um, I don't know. I, I just have not had that experience yet. <laughs> not saying that I'm exempt. Um, next is how did you start your online boutique? I just researched, researched and researched and I started my online boutique literally by myself with no help. Um, this has been kind of like a thought of mine. I was going to say a dream, but I kind of realized, um, that's not exactly what I want to do with it. So it's on hold. Um, but yeah, like I started this as a thought years ago and I finally was just like, I think it was 2018, April 6, April, something. It was April of 2018, I believe. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do this. Um, well, that's when we went live. But up until that point, I was like researching everything. I'd made my own website. I did not have any help in creating the website. Um, I researched my own vendors. No one gave me vendors for free or anything like that. I didn't purchase a list of vendors, none of that. Did all my own research and started, you know what I'm saying? And I learned along the way. And it was one of those things that I had to get it out of my system to see if that was something that I really, really, really wanted to do. And though I do enjoy it, I had to realize that business, like me creating content that I love that you guys appreciate is totally different than me selling clothes that I love, but trying to sell them to an audience um, because you have to please your customer, not just yourself. You know, so that was like the the most thing that I had to learn. Like that was the hardest learning lesson for me. But yeah, that's what I did. Like I did all the research and I just went live and was like, are y'all going to buy from me or not? <laughs> uh, methods you apply to grow as an influencer. The only concrete method I would say that I did to grow is became more consistent. Um, I had always like made content that I you know, kind of enjoyed. I love shopping. Um, and now that I am more consistent, I'm getting more brand deals and more just opportunities. Um, and just became a little bit more professional when it came to my Instagram, for sure. Because 
my Instagram, I used to just post pictures, child, whenever I would go out. And, you know, I didn't care. I just posted them. I didn't edit anything. I didn't adjust the lighting. None of that. Just post the picture and go. And so obviously now um, I don't have a curated feed at all, but I definitely try to make sure that the picture pops out and, you know, it looks as best as it as it can. Um, but the main thing I did to grow was literally creating content on a very consistent basis and giving um, my audience something to look forward to. So you know you're going to see me Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 a.m. And I think that people like that type of comf comfortability and that familiarity, you know, so they know that they can count on it. It's kind of like going to Cheers, you know, everybody knows your name or going to your favorite burger spot and the burger tastes the exact same every time you go. Like that is something that you know, it's psychologically, it just works for people. So that's what I've done. And it's really helped me a lot. I stay true to who I am. I'm not going to do anything that I don't like. I'm not going to follow a trend. And like, I don't have a TikTok, not to say that it's a bad thing, but I just do, I do what I like, you know, and I think that I found my people that enjoy that as well. So I'm grateful and it's a blessing. You know, God always had a plan over my life. It was just up to me to tap into it. And he still has so much more in store for me, but it's up to me to kind of go out there, put myself out there to get it. And then he will make it, make it rain. <laughs> but yeah. Next question is, a lot of people have labeled this pandemic a life reset. Has any of your goals changed since this all happened? Um, so one thing I will say, I started setting concrete, like real goals for myself in 2019. I've never, and I always say this, been like a Pinterest girl. I'm not very organized. I just kind of just do things okay and hope for the best um but in 2000 and i think it was the end of 2018 going into 2019 i set some concrete goals for myself for my channel for my life um and a lot of great things came into fruition and i really want to credit that to me setting those goals so i did the same thing in january i kind of set some goals soft goal like i don't just I write everything down because I definitely believe in writing it down, making it happen. That is a book, by the way. But I don't um, I don't hold myself so accountable to where I'm beating myself up if I don't accomplish every single goal. But one thing I've learned that writing down my goals has done for me is that I am actively trying to accomplish those because I wrote it down and I'm a person that if I say I'm going to do something I'm going to do it so I say all that to say um, my goals have not changed as much because you know they're still achievable even during this weird time that we're in right now but um, the only thing that has kind of changed is like shopping I don't have a reason to shop even though I kind of shopped last week a little bit um, and I said I wasn't going to, but I've saved so much money, you guys, by not going out to eat, not, you know, going out drinking with my friends, not using gas. I have been on a, um, I'm on a half a tank. I haven't gotten gas in like three or four weeks. So yeah, um, I don't do anything. So there's absolutely no itch for me to like really buy anything. I think the last week I started to get a little bit bored and kind of, you know, start buying home things like I mentioned and it kind of went a little haywire, but um, my goals are still the same. I really have some big goals this year that I kind of want to accomplish or even move closer to accomplishing. And I'm still working on those and have even more time to do so now. So, uh, yeah, I think that this pandemic has definitely shown us what's important in life for sure. And it has, um, kind of changed our mindsets a little bit to realize like life is super short. Uh, and you know, you need to make the best decisions that you can because you just don't know what tomorrow will bring. But my goals that I have set for myself personally are still the same. Next question. What advice would you give a 30 year old black woman who screwed up her teens and twenties to realistically become a successful entrepreneur businesswoman like you? Wow. Um, First of all, 30 is not old, so you have plenty of time to like change the trajectory of your life. Um, I don't know what you've done, you know, in your teens or your 20s to where you consider it to be a screw up. But as I mentioned previously, every bad thing that I've gone through, I look at it like a lesson and never a loss because I've learned something from it. So I think the first thing is just to kind of 
wrap your head around maybe why those things occurred, you know, why you maybe went through some of those trials and, you know, tribulations that you did go through um, so that you can kind of understand what you need to change. And as far as like becoming an entrepreneur and a businesswoman, um, I think that, you know, that has to be a goal of yours. What do you want to do? Where do you want to, where do you see yourself as far as in the entrepreneur realm? Like, you know, what businesses do you want to own? Start by doing your research on those things. Pray. I am a firm believer in prayer. I believe in Jesus. Um, I'm a Christ follower. So, you know, I don't know if you are or not, but the thing that helps me and the thing that keeps me sane and grounded, like God don't play about me. I say this all the time, but one thing God has done is let me know that um, he ain't going to just give it to me. Okay. And it's because I'm lazy. So in this, he's teaching me not to be lazy as well, but I have to always take the first step. I have to evaluate. What do I want? What is a create some type of plan to kind of get to where I want or just start researching on Google or whatever it is. And he always, always, always comes through. I just have to take the first step and literally Things just start, the ball starts rolling. It's a snowball effect and I'm ending up where I, you know, want to be or what I saw for myself as far as that goal was concerned. So I think that that's a good place to start. Just kind of evaluate what you want out of life. Um, what kind of business you may want to own. Do your research on that. I created my own boutique, like I mentioned previously, all on my own. Absolutely no help from anyone. So, and I'm not even a tech savvy person, trust and believe. Um, but if I can do it, you can do it. So yeah, good luck. Hey, Britt, I don't have any questions. Oh, okay. Just wanted to say that thank you for creating an amazing and classy space for women to bond and grow, especially during these trying times. Your content is a much needed escape. Hey, Pockets and Bows family. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. I'm so glad that you guys feel like, um, you know, this is a safe place because that is all I want to do. I don't want to, I do not like negativity. Like I just can't stand it. It gets on my nerves. It keeps me up. Like when things are negative, I just can't, you know, it just gives me anxiety. And I do see you guys, you know, talking to each other throughout the comments, you know, making friends and all of that. So I'm so happy that this is a safe space and you feel that it is a safe space for you to just come talk about your purchases or things that you love with no judgment um, and, you know, make friends and find people who are like-minded. So thank you. All right, y'all. So that was the last question and my hair is laid, so I can't complain. I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A and was able to learn a little bit more about me, especially for those of you who are new to my channel. Due to COVID-19, we're getting a lot of traffic over here and I'm so grateful and blessed to have you here. So I definitely hope that you were able to learn, you know, a little bit more about me, where I come from, what I'm all about. I feel like the people who watch my vlogs on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, excuse me, we're like family. Like y'all see me in my bonnet, my robe, and then y'all know I can come to this point as well, you know, zero to 100 real quick. So I'm just so grateful for all the new people. Hopefully uh, this video was fun for you guys and you were able to learn a little bit more about me. Um, also, this unit, I'm loving it so much. Still thinking about cutting it, I'm not sure, but no split ends on this, you guys. Like, look at how beautiful this is. I like that it's a natural brown color. It's not too dark, but it still gives me that like dark look especially with this like sleek part in the middle the only negative I would say is that it had a ton of flyaways but I was able to kind of like you know tame those no tangles or anything and I'll make sure to leave all the information for this unit in the description box below for you guys um, I hope everybody is doing well staying safe and you know finding something to do during this time to like keep you mentally sane. It is a hard time for so many. I think I'm an introvert, so it's been easy for me, but I would say the last week I've been feeling very anxious lately. And I don't know if it's because I'm stuck in the house or what, but I have been waking up like feeling anxious, like there's something that I need to do. And you know, it's just, it's so nice to be able to have YouTube and social media where you can connect with people. So I'm hoping that this video was able to just bring a little bit of joy and light into your life. And thank you guys so much. I'm so grateful to have you here. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed these types of videos and I will talk to you on my next one. Bye y'all.